All right, welcome to the R introduction lecture three companion to the OLS formulas lectures that we were looking at. And so in the series of lectures, uh, or the various parts of lecture three, we were looking at ordinary least squares, minimizing the sum of squared residuals, total sum of squares, R squared, and things like that. And so now in R, we're going to look at how do you look at these uh, calculations and what do they mean with some real data. And so we're going to continue along with our car data so that we can become familiar with it. So to load the car data, load the library called mass that has the car data in it and attach the car data called uh, cars 93 and do a summary of cars 93. Remember, if you don't haven't done the s equals summary shortcut, you need to type s equals summary or type the whole word summary in order to do summaries. So here's our data. And if we do a regression, what we need to notice is that Let's just uh, run one to look at as an example here. Let's just go back to our original explaining price with horsepower to begin with. So we'll run this regression. Now, if you've already done this, you don't have to do it again. But for those of you that might be new, car.reg1, naming the regression, equals LM, linear model, price, explained with horsepower. Now let's do a summary of that regression, car.reg1. Now what we want to look at is in addition to looking at the y-intercept being 1.39 and the slope 0.1454, which loosely would mean with zero horsepower we'd predict the price to be negative 1,000. $398 in this data because the dependent variable is in thousands of dollars and the slope means that for each additional horsepower one you add one hundred and forty five point four dollars because again the dependent variable is in thousands so to interpret it it's point one four five thousand dollars one hundred and forty five dollars now what we can also look at now that we uh, have gotten our feet wet with some of these formulas and, and terms, look at the R squared. 0.6213 tells us that 62.13% of the variation or variance of the dependent variable price can be explained with this model. A simple straight line with one explanatory variable, one slope and one y-intercept. Now, you remember the formula uh, that we had for adjusted R squared. Adjusted R squared adjusts for how many explanatory variables we're using. Now remember what we talked about. An adjusted R squared is meaningless the, unless you have another adjusted R squared to compare it to. So let's do that right now and see what happens. Now as we did before, let's add a variable for origin in my data set, I called it domestic, um, and it was a dummy variable. Here we have USA or non-USA origin, and what R will do if we include this qualitative variable as an explanatory variable, it will create a dummy variable for us. So let's look and see how that works. I'm going to run this regression again. I'm going to number it maybe five, car reg five, since we've done some uh, several on the car data sets. Price explained with horsepower plus this other variable, origin, with a capital O. Now what this is going to do is just change the y-intercept, not the slope. So we're adding one variable, allowing the y-intercepts of the two lines to be different. Let's look at a summary of this regression. Now it says 
the y-intercept, well first let's go here, origin non-USA. That means that if the car is not domestic, then we're going to add 3 to the y-intercept. If it's not, so this is the dummy variable whose value is 1, if it's non-USA, 0, if it's USA. So if we wanted to explain the price of a foreign car, non-USA is 1, then we would take the y-intercept 3.18, add 3.06 to the y-intercept, because it's a non-USA car, and that gives us the total y-intercept, which would be just barely slightly negative if we add those two together. Horsepower, the slope, 0 0.147, $147.00. 52 cents per horsepower. There's only one slope for both kinds of cars here. I wanted to do it this way just to show you that if we add one variable, right, origin non-USA, allowing the uh, y-intercept to change, let's look and see what happens to the adjusted r-squared and the r-squared. Now the r-squared went up from 0.6213 to 0.6465. So we can explain a larger percentage of the variation in prices, 64.65% now. And it's going to be the case always, almost always, yeah, every once in a while it will happen, that R squared won't go up. But in general, the principle is with more information, you can predict better, and your R squared goes up. But your R, adjusted R squared might go up or it might go down. And one rule of thumb people use, and really the only use of the adjusted R squared, is if you add a variable and the adjusted R squared goes up, keep the variable. Now again, it's just one rule of thumb. It's not the only one or the best rule to use, but I'm just explaining what that means. Now um, let's look at some of these other numbers here. The residual standard error, this is the standard error of the regression that we calculated. This is just a different name for it. And this is telling us that a common sized prediction error for our model is about $5,800,000. So one of the common ups and downs on 90 degrees of freedom. This is that n minus k minus 1 that we see in the bottom of the adjusted R squared formula. N, we have 93 cars, minus K, two explanatory variables, minus 1, which accounts for the fact that we also have a y-intercept here. Now let's add another variable. Let's allow the slope and the y-intercept to change in this regression. Now we can do that by saying horsepower plus origin plus horsepower times origin. And let's just look at that regression and see what happened to the R squared and the adjusted R squared. Again, the R squared went up, which it almost always will, and the adjusted R squared also went up. So some people would argue that's a good thing to do. Uh, because the adjusted R squared went up, we should leave that interaction between those two allow a different slope for the two models. Now I think there are better ways to tell when you should include a variable. For example, uh, we'll, and we'll look at some of these later on, but one is uh, looking at the standard error of the estimate, the t stat, and the p value. We'll look at those in later lectures. Uh, another one is if you just look at the graph of the data, does it look like you should allow for a different y intercept and a different slope for the two equations? And if it looks like it, and if it makes sense, you should do it, regardless of what anything, you know, any other indicators tell you. Now we have lots of other variables that we could include in here, and um, I'll just keep adding them one by one here real quickly and see what happens. For example, we could include mile per gallon city. Okay, let's add that in a regression, and I'm, I want to keep adding until we see something doesn't increase the adjusted R squared of a regression. 0 0.6745, 0 0.679, it went up again. Okay, what's another variable we can include here? 
engine size and RPM. Let's let's add RPM. I'm hoping that one won't uh, affect the adjusted R squared, or it won't improve it. But it actually did improve it. Wow! 